Hey guys, welcome to Legit Street Cars. So I'm about a thousand miles away from home on a farm in sunny Florida because I bought this, an auction Audi. And many of you guys had mentioned in the comment section that I've had BMWs, I've had Mercedes and AMG cars, and that I should try out an Audi. So I did. And you guys had specifically mentioned the S4 because it's a great sports sedan bargain. So I looked into this and I'd have to agree, this car kind of reminds me of my 335i or dare I say my E55s because it's factory boosted. So it's very tunable. Being an Audi, it has all wheel drive. So it'll launch really well. It could be a year round daily driver and they're very inexpensive, even in today's crazy used car market. So I have bought a 2013, you Audi guys will know, this is a B8 and a half, so the facelifted S4. And this car still looks modern even today. So they did some updates to the exterior styling. They updated the interior as well. It's got a lot of cool and modern features. And I got it for a very good price at the auction. But as you could probably imagine, uh, I didn't go see this car. I bought it sight unseen, hence why I'm in Florida at my buddy Sam Crack's farm. And it was at an auction around here and we had it delivered here in the middle of the field. So now I have the car and a few extra pets to bring home with me. And there are cows and chickens in the background that we're gonna hear throughout this video. This is much, much different than filming in Chicago. So a friend of mine bid and won this car for me because it was sold at a dealer only auction. And you can tell this was sitting on a lot because it has some advertising on the window, navigation, cold AC. I love when some of the smaller dealers will even add in their power windows and door locks as if you can get a modern car without that stuff. But there's a good chance that this S4 sat at this Chrysler and Jeep dealer on the lot for a while and then they decided decided to dump it at the auction for a measly $10,000. So this is a clean title S4 with 128,000 miles. It looks to be in good cosmetic condition and it's totally stock. And in today's market, this should retail for somewhere around 17 to $18,000. Now these dealer auctions do have to list some of the issues with the car, but as you can imagine, they're pretty vague. So this one's primary issue is a check engine light, which as we know, could be anything from a bad gas cap to a bad engine. It was listed as a run and drive and it definitely starts right up and it does drive around at least this grassy field pretty well actually with the all wheel drive. Um, but as you can see, it does have a check engine light and there will be a coolant warning that'll pop up every once in a while. There it is there. You probably saw it when I first started it up. Other than that, it runs pretty well. I don't really see any issue with the way that it runs. But we have to figure out what the deal is with the check engine light and the coolant lights. I'm concerned about both because if this thing overheats, we don't know if the dealership overheated the engine and damaged the head gaskets or something along those lines. This is an all aluminum engine. So I've already let it run for about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna keep going and just monitor this closely and see if this thing actually overheats. So while this supercharged three liter engine is warming up, we're gonna scan it for codes using the Carly connected tool. And I carry this with me all the time, especially on trips like this, because it's a very powerful and portable diagnostic tool that simply plugs into your OBD2 connector just like that. And then we're gonna pick the type of car we're working on and it saves the last one you scanned and the codes, even if you've cleared them, which is nice. So we're gonna add a car, Audi S4, 13. And we're gonna check for issues. So right now it is scanning all of the control modules on the S4. 65%, five issues found, not bad, six. 100%, seven, not bad. Okay, so we have four in the engine. Let's just go for that. And the first one and most important is the coolant pump mechanical malfunction. Now I believe this has a mechanical water pump. It might have an electronic auxiliary pump, um, but typically engines won't overheat if the auxiliary pump is bad. So I wonder if this code is only set when it overheats. Next we have rail pressure. The other two are random misfires, um, but I'm more concerned about the overheating, the potential overheating issue. It's been running now for about 15 minutes and uh, we're still right in the middle. So the big question is, did the guy at the dealership overheat this thing while it was cruising on the highway or was it pegged in the red for a long time? It's an all aluminum engine. So if they did that, they could have damaged the head gaskets at the very least. They could have warped the block or the heads as well. 
that's what I'm worried about. And I'm hoping that they just saw a few warnings. They saw older Audi and they just decided not even to mess with it and dump it at the auction. Sometimes they do that. Sometimes they get a big repair estimate from a dealer. They get scared and just send it off. So I'm hoping for the first one. And that's why these auction cars, even the nice dealer auctions are a huge gamble. If this needs an engine or something major, it wasn't worth it. Okay, and just in the time it took me to say that, we have passed the halfway point. And from what I read on the forums, it's supposed to be right at that middle mark. Now the cows have surrounded me, and I don't know if it's because they sense something major with this engine, but we do have fans that are working, so that's a good sign. The coolant is at the maximum level. Eh, not the best sign. It might have overheated, spilled over, and then they topped it up, but at least we have fans. And the engine, it looks pretty clean, it looks nice. Nothing's taken apart, good sign as well. Being a guy from Chicago, this is very weird. Normally, it's like kids in the neighborhood that are watching me film out in the driveway or making a lot of noise for me, but yeah, I have a few thousand pounds of cow eating grass while I work on an Audi. It's very strange. What, 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 dude? It's all good? It's fine, is it overheating? I don't know, I don't know, let's see. Oh, wow. All right, maybe the cows know more than we think. They're all coming by right now to see the devastation. This guy's getting hot. I'm gonna stop once it gets to that white line because I know that's not normal. All right, that's getting high. I'm gonna go ahead and call it that this engine would overheat if we allow it to, so let's shut it down. And I'm gonna restart it really quick because I think it'll show the error as soon, yeah, there we go. Coolant system fault, turn off engine. That's what it's showing us every once in a while. Not a good sign. All right, I've let it cool off for a few minutes. I'm just gonna drive it over to the barn because that's where we're gonna work on it. We gotta figure out what we're gonna do. And I kinda wanna get it away from these cows. Sorry, guys. And here we go. Quattro all-wheel drive S4 with a potentially bad engine. Crossing my fingers, that's not the case. I'm driving on the Sam Crack farm. I don't even know where I'm going. Uh, we got to get it out of cow land and we got to get it over there where a few other exotics and Euro cars just kind of lie around broken. We have an abandoned green Ferrari. We have a pizza car and here's the Aston. Lots of stuff going on here. Definitely doesn't need another broken car. Hopefully this is minor. Open the hood, Alex. I've seen this car. I've been storing it here for months, okay? I know what it's... But have you seen it? It's this? really nice. Look how clean it is. It's a clean engine. But you know what I always say? When you buy a car at the auction and it's got a super clean engine, it's got an engine problem. Well, it was at a dealer. They detailed the thing. So it could be yes. normal. It could be normal. That, that makes a lot of sense. And in this case, you did the code scan you found. We found a coolant pump malfunction. It's got a mechanical water pump that doesn't seem all wobbly. And I believe it has the metal uh, the, impeller in there. You know the Germans, they like to call pumps this, thermostats. Right. They like to call boots, trunks. I mean, you're wearing boots. That's, that has nothing to do with the car. <laughs> so they, when you have a code like this, in my opinion, the Germans like to use certain words. I personally think it's smart to go and attack the thermostat first. It's a known problem on this right. car. And I didn't see any wobbling pulleys, but then again, I didn't look It, it too looks hard. good. So I actually yeah. ordered a thermostat set. We have to take the blower off to get to the thermostat. Which so is crazy. It's crazy, of course, it's an Audi, but that's already here. So I wanna do a thermostat. I wanna cross my fingers and hope that that's gonna work, but you know what we gotta do after this engine cools off? The head gasket test. Ah, I got that I from just, another car. I just <laughs> did it on my Lightning and it failed. I'm hoping I'm not two for two here, but before we get into anything, if they overheated it severely, it could have popped the head gasket. It's overheating. We know that. It's not blowing any smoke. So it's we haven't driven it enough to see if it's spewing out of the reservoir like the lightning. So I think that's next after it cools off because we'll burn ourselves. I have the test. The only time I've used that test, Alex, unfortunately it did fail, but... Yeah. I have a little bit more confidence in this because, I mean, just look again how clean it is, you yeah. know? Yeah. Let's break it out. Purple fluid. It's going to stay purple. It's got to stay purple. And we're going to be good. We can start tearing it apart. that, we're going to do something oh. fun. We got to let this thing cool off anyway. Let me show you guys what we can do in the instrument cluster on this thing. We can code the car and unlock hidden features. This is so, so cool. 
Let me show you. So Carly's found three control units that we can code, which means there are literally dozens of features that you can unlock. So let's read from the car and it's gonna save a backup. So this is totally reversible. Okay, so backup successful. And let's see what we can do here. Oh, this is what I was looking for, lap timer. So some of these Audis have a factory lap timer and on this car, it's turned off from the factory. So we're just gonna go in here and turn it back on. And then we just hit code car. And here you go, Carly is now coding that control unit. So you might get some noises from the cluster and things that pop up and that's successful. Look at that, super quick. We're gonna turn the ignition off. Okay. And we'll turn it back on. And I'm just gonna run this for a few seconds just to show you guys, but where is it? Here we go, lap timer. Cool, and we're gonna use the factory stock to control this. This is just like an Audi would have right from the factory. You can stop it, you can add different timers as well, and this would cost you hundreds of dollars if you brought this to a shop with the factory Audi software to have it coded. Another feature I know you guys will appreciate is the used car check. And so this is gonna to check to see if the mileage has been tampered with. And Carly's detected no tampering. So it's found seven control units that all store up mileage separately. They all match. It's in kilometers, but that is the amount of kilometers if you do the math that this 2013 S4 has. So everything checks out. Guys, this is an invaluable research when you're doing your own pre-purchase inspection. The best part is you guys can save 15% off of the Carly connected car. If you click on my link in the video, just description box and use coupon code legit street cars. This is a limited time offer. So if you guys have wanted one of these, now would be a great time to buy. So a big thanks to Carly for continuing to support automotive content creators like myself. Now let's test out these head gaskets. Please cross your fingers for me. Let's hope they're okay. And maybe just maybe we'll get away with a thermostat. All right. So you guys just saw me do this on the lightning. So all we need to do is pour the magical blue fluid up until the line. Put this little guy on top with the metal sticking up. And at this point, we're gonna let the engine warm up for about 10 minutes. Okay, so the engine's been running for about 10 minutes. So now we're gonna pump the air through for about one minute. And what we're doing is we're drawing in the gases from the coolant reservoir. And if it is mixed with combustion gases due to a blown head gasket, this fluid will turn yellow. All right, so I've been at this for about a minute and the fluid is still blue. So that is good. And the lightning, it turned yellow almost instantly. Okay, so now that we know the head gaskets are okay, I've cleared out the codes and I just wanna see if the overheat one comes back immediately or not. So we shouldn't have anything right now. And yeah, I think we're good, no overheating. So that's a good sign. And the check engine light hasn't immediately come back on, so that's good. And I kind of figured the coolant malfunction wouldn't immediately come on because it's all mechanical. It's got a mechanical thermostat and a mechanical water pump. It's not electronic, which had it failed electronically, it could have set that immediately. So I believe that code is set when the coolant temperature goes out of spec too high in this case. And sometimes when you have an open thermostat, you'll get a check engine light because it's not warming up as quickly and it's an emissions issue. Uh, so it is very possible that it is starting to overheat due to a bad thermostat. And in doing a little bit of research, that is the most common problem area in the cooling system. On some other Audi models that share this engine, there was a technical service bulletin from Audi to replace the thermostat first. So I'm hoping it's that. It can also be the water pump down here, but it spins fine and that repair is completely unrelated to this one. So let's knock out this thermostat. Unfortunately, the supercharger and a bunch of stuff around it has to come out to get to that guy, but Luckily, we are well equipped at the Sam Crack compound here. And I've literally taken apart Ferrari engines with that toolkit, Alex. That is the toolkit we'll be using to pull the supercharger off. It's got everything you need. And I got it on Black Friday, $99. It was a good deal too. It's $99, yeah. All right, so I'm not used to this, but uh, we'll see how this works. Do you have any power tools? No, no, I do everything by, by hand. hand. Okay, yeah. so it's all hand built here at, at Sam Crack. I mean, a Ferrari engine was hand built. True, so true. It's a better way to put it back. I tried with my feet once, it didn't work. So I've let this cool down for another couple of hours because it's retaining a lot of heat here in Florida, but we don't have any pressure in the cooling system, so we're good to go. I'm not burning my hand. So let's do this. We're gonna start off with this beauty cover right here. And this is an Eaton supercharger, cool. We have another beauty cover right here. And there is a lot of stuff going on. So I think I'm gonna start off with this air intake. Up on 
ramps of time? Uh, I think I've driven up on ramps like three times. Yeah. I I have lifts, Sam. I have okay. lifts. Listen, yeah. not all of us you. are big time, you know? Yeah, one day. So one of the issues with the three liter is that they rattle upon startup. And in 2013, supposedly they fixed that. So there were bad tensioners in the rear and you'd replace the tensioners and that would sort of fix it. But Audi says if it rattles at cold startup, from between one and three seconds, that's normal. So I didn't hear anything there, but then again, it wasn't cold. Um, but the 13 should have that problem fixed. All right, so we have the S4 on ramps because we have to drain the coolant. So I'm gonna go ahead and start disconnecting stuff, starting with this air intake tube. Get this guy out of the way. All right, that's good enough. By the time we get the supercharger off, it should be empty, but I just want to show you guys the condition of this thing underneath. So that's the oil pan. I don't think someone changed out the little washer there. So it's got a little leak there, but everything is really dry outside of that, which I don't think is an issue. And this little seepage right there, no big deal. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good under here. And I got to say, this is a very tight engine. Hey, Sam, very tight. You got to like take the whole front bumper off to work on really anything in the front so if we need to do a water pump it has to go into a service mode which is essentially loosening up the entire front end i mean alex i want to just jump right into it and take these supercharger bolts off but i know there's probably a million other things that gotta yeah come it's, off. it's tempting there's just like three on this side and three on that i think that might be it um but yeah that's not have... going to just bring it up i think you got these what are you taking we got these hoses on the side and then we've got, we got um, lots of vacuum lines and there's these covers too. Let me get a trim panel removal tool. Now people on the video, they're always going, you need to introduce Sage. So Sage, one day when I really need to get my video to eight and a half minutes, I'll introduce you. <laughs> See, people don't give me enough credit, Alex. Look at how clean I just took that. Yeah, I just needed a flathead screwdriver and Sam's got a real trim panel removal tool. I have a lot of stuff you like this. You got a this. lot of stuff, don't you? I don't have a lift. I mean, Alex, I'm looking at this thing that's going to have to, so the torque's over there. Oh, it doesn't look that hard. It, I think it pays like four and a half hours. Which means it's a 30 minute job. Yeah, right. That's true. I mean, not to like criticize. I know you, uh, a lot of your life was spent at the dealer, which is cool. Our whole point was to beat book time. So yeah, if book time's three and a half, I bet you there's Audi guys out there that can do this in an hour and a half. All right, I'm taking this cowl out. Not because I think I have to, but I am hearing some ruffling around here. There's got to be a frog or some kind of creature in here that's about to jump out. I'm working on this thing and all I hear is there's a bunch of leaves in here. You guys are going to see a frog jump out at me in this video. I know it. I wish we would just get it over with though, you know? This isn't something you should have to worry about. There's the rooster. All right, Alex is out, right? Supercharger is still there. Yeah, I know. What have you been doing? Eating fries? Well, I was doing that like a few minutes ago. Uh huh. We really should get some help on this. Sam, you really need some tools. This is out of a this is out of a car, isn't it? This is out of a toolkit from some random. Yeah, car. that is. Yeah. But that's not. I have pliers, Alex. I have yeah. lots of pliers. Uh huh. Look at this. I have a set of four snap ring pliers. Wow. Okay. You want to talk about pliers? I got pliers. Okay. Where they are, I couldn't tell you. All right. So I'm hoping we can leave these pipes on the blower. These pliers are absolutely horrible. Ugh. Sam, pliers. Pliers? Pliers. Let me get pliers. I got pliers, dude. Okay, got that one down. Okay, we should have enough coolant drained at this point, but we'll just do a complete coolant flush anyway. Okay, well, I got that off. Look at this. What do you got? These, this is this? No. Where's the pliers I gave you earlier? Those were good. The big ones? I don't know. That's why I don't have any pliers. Those Alex. weren't that good of pliers. These are oh, amazing come on. Pliers. Okay, all right. Those are the best. I use those for everything. All right, I for guess these, these aren't too bad. Best. All right, we'll make do, guys. We'll make do. A thousand miles away from home. We got to make it happen. Come on, hose. Don't fight me. Oh, now it's coming out quick. Oh, oh. Oh, wait. Yeah, good. As long there we as they're go. coming out there, I mean, come on, let's not make a mess. Of All right, so I'm down below, and I am moving yep, the yeah. supercharger belt tensioner. Got it. You got it? Yeah, it's off. Okay, okay. That's it. That's it. And yeah, it's a 16 mil on the bottom. We're good to go. Alex, you were stressing over that. Be <sighs> honest. You were like, bro, 
It looked really hard. There's no room in here. And a lot of guys will put it in the service position, which is basically taking the whole front end and pulling it forward. I did this job before. Alex. Yeah, he's a, he's a seasoned veteran here, guys. So we should have this off in like two minutes then, right? Did you ever take That's your blower it? off? Never took the blower off, but just these bolts on the six of them? I mean, we're, it's, really, it's not that hard. So we've disconnected pretty much everything we can see. I think we still have a few more things to go there, but we're jumping ahead a little bit and just loosening up the supercharger bolts or nuts, right? They're nuts, yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull some lines off of this guy. I gotta say, this is, uh, is kind of nice. We had Sage helping us out a little bit too. <laughs> so there's a total of three of us working on this guy. We had Sage. We had Sage, he had to go. I'm ready to rip this thing off. I know, I know. I know. We just got a couple, couple connectors left here, Sam, and then we're good. I'm gonna rest this up against an electrical connector, okay? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, it is already rocking. Is it moving? Yeah, it's moving. Heck yeah, it's moving. Oh, cool. Wow. They lift it out with this. That's awesome. Yeah, it's nice. A long extension. They give you handles. Uh, I think we still have some stuff in the way. Oh, wait, no, we don't. Hold on, get another extension. This is coming out. All right, here we go. Man. Okay. Oh, oh dude. It's right there. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We forgot a connector. Okay, got it. Got it? Yep. Dude, this... Are you serious? Hold on, there's one more connection right wow, here. this is so easy. And <laughs> this is the easiest supercharger ever. Don't wanna break anything. Don't break it. You know, I gotta say these vacuum lines don't mess around on these Audis. Should I just get one little pick and pick it out? Oh wait, now we, we got another one underneath here we can't forget about. One. Nice, and we got one more. And we can't forget that one on our way in. This thing is pretty hot. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hot here in Florida, I gotta say. I don't know if I could deal with this humidity all year. Is it all? Is it like this all year? No, it's beautiful. Dude, the winter is like your most ideal thing. It lasts about two weeks though, hmm. the winter. Yeah, mine's about six months. But you do have crime in your area. Yeah, we do have around. crime. Yes, we do. Yep, yeah. yeah, which is nice. You can do it. So really like, I, again, if this has never been changed out, Isn't that the mileage is in really nice shape. I don't think it's ever been taken apart. To be sitting in a hot part of the engine like this. Come on. Okay, it's all right. Okay. Got it? Hold on. Anything oh, else? Oh, 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 Alex oh. on my barn floor, my God. <laughs> oh man, I'm sure you've never, of... never had anything else on no, the floor. No, it's a little bit cooler. <laughs> here we go. Okay. All right, and here it is. It looks pretty complicated. It looks a little messy, but overall getting the supercharger off was very, very simple. I think it took us like 45 minutes. And here, buried under the blower is the thermostat. So I think there are six bolts that hold that in. And of course, we got our thermostat from FCP Euro. So they sell an entire kit. So you get the thermostat, you get this little pipe that goes in the bottom of the supercharger with new O-rings. You get the supercharger seals and a few more seals there. And of course your coolant and it's covered under their lifetime parts replacement guarantee. So FCP Euro, if you need any European car parts. And with that, I think at this point, we're just gonna move some stuff out of the way. I'll get this big, huge plastic tube out. And uh, yeah, hopefully not too much else has to come out like this guy because <laughs> that rooster might not be happy about it. All right, so I moved some stuff out of the way and let's remove some T30s. All right, so of course there's one bolt that we can't get to. This is a hard pipe, so we can't really manipulate it too much. No, we can't get to it. This set. I love these, man. This is, uh, I use them all the time, uh, especially in these European cars when there's tight fitting places. So did it's you, an Allen key with a Torx head on the end. Did you find that in the, in the field? Alex, I use my tools in all situations, including the elements. Look, it gets Whoa. right to it on both sides. So look right at that. Look at that. I mean, look Chicken at that. farming has taught you well, Sam. Listen, you don't think I have tools. I have the best tools. I mean, they're I mean, weathered. Apparently, apparently. That's, a that's little a bit really of rust nice... can come off, you know. But... It's, it's patina. It's, it's tool patina. Wow. No problem. Good job, guys. Give this video a thumbs up because of Sam's ingenuity with these tools. Please. Listen, four, Please. four likes and I will, um, Alex will buy everybody a set of these in the oh, comment geez. section. This is a hard pipe and it does go into this. I'm really hoping we can finagle i don't know if that's a word that everybody uses do you guys use finagle yeah, here yeah. okay okay i don't know if that was like a chicago thing because i don't want to have to loosen up this pipe i might have to i didn't think we we're going to need this so soon but yeah this pipe's not moving and i found that there's just a t25 
basically underneath it. I got it. This tool is amazing. Dude, I told I actually, you about that tool. I actually think I have these in my new tool set. Bologna. I don't really have do. Those. No, I think I do. They're not as rusted at, at all. But well, see, mine have that and, rust that makes it get into the crevices. Ah, uh, yeah. Mine have. I think rubber grips. They're really nice. I don't. I don't want to hear about those, Alex. You yeah. haven't used yours as much as I've used mine. I've never. Sure. I haven't used them yet, Sam. But now that I like kind of know about them and their capabilities, amazing. And I'm glad I didn't go nuts on this coolant pipe. I gotta say because I probably could have broke it. Got it. Woohoo! He's now getting it back. How's that gonna? Be? It's gonna. It's not gonna be fun. So I ended up having to remove the two bolts on the passenger side for this tube, and I think I barely got it out of the way to remove the thermostat. And there it is. I hope this is all that's bad. All right, now we're gonna get this guy, new seal. All right, now it's time for the new thermostat. This should go in pretty pain-free. There we go. Go ahead and start some of these bolts up right now. Then we'll put the pipe in. Definitely gonna tighten this one before we install the pipe. All right, this is a nightmare, but I got this guy to push in and we left the thermostat bolts loose so we could just pull it up a little bit. So that is nice and snug. And now let's tighten up some bolts. And we're gonna need the Sam specialty tool here. And this is a plastic housing, so be very gentle. Don't over torque these, you can snap the plastic. A little bit goes a long way here. Just like that, the thermostat's done. It's about a thousand degrees out here. I'm pretty gross right now, but I'm really happy that after about two hours, we have a new thermostat in. So now I have to get the four bolts back into the tubes, which I can't show you anything. It's just buried in there. Sorry, I'm gross right now. Um, and then the blower's going back on. So not a bad job overall, but I think the three and a half hours for a first timer is probably about right with cleaning and bleeding coolant and all of that good stuff. So anyway, let me zip this pipe in. All right, everything is back together. It's time to replace the blower seals. And that's just a matter of picking out the old ones. And then we just install the new one. If you have any crud in here, you can clean it out. Okay, so then we'll just repeat that five more times. And the blower is ready to go on. All right, now we're gonna just swap out this pipe at the bottom of the blower. All right, I'm gonna just slide this new one in like that. Good. I got it. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Blower going back on. Wait, 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 hang on. Finger? Yep, got it. Okay, there. That was the coolant pipe that just snapped in. She's down. Okay, let's yeah. start her up. <laughs> All right, so good deal. Putting the supercharger on is very, very simple. Really, if it wasn't for that front coolant pipe, this would be an hour and a half job. But we're in pretty good shape here with this supercharger. Gonna twerk these nuts down. Twerk. 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 What did I say? Twerk. We're gonna twerk them down? Yeah. That's not what I said. That'd be an interesting video. That too. would be. All right, this hose plugged in place. Alex, I've almost got it done there. Boom, boom. <sighs> Push this down. I, I can't believe how much we're using this little guy right here. This has been the savior. The tool you don't have that I do. I do. I do have this tool. You don't have that tool. I bet you don't. I do. It's a sonic tool. I got the whole set. They just don't have any rust on them yet. Click, 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 click. Oh, she didn't leave any work for me to do. Click, click, click. You know what, why don't you uh, hook up the vacuum bleeder so we can easily get coolant in this thing. Do you have one? I do have one. Okay, that's done. Now let's get our little factory air intake dealy on here. And I've already plugged in about a dozen vacuum tubes and connectors and whatnot. So that's good. All right, last clamp to tighten up that frog. It never jumped out at me. I think I'm gonna end up, I don't know where it is. Bunch of leaves, we'll have to vacuum these out. So I'll leave the cowl off for now. Let's fire this up. A storm's a brewing guys, but we're getting this S4 done. I just got the blower belt on and we're ready to put this cooling system into a vacuum. So we're putting this into a vacuum right now. 
probably get to about 25. All right, so let it hold there. Now, Alex, I like to do something. Before I just go and flip this, which is gonna suck the coolant in out of the bucket down below, I like to actually turn the vacuum back on a little bit because if you think about it, there's air in this line. The whole purpose of this is to get rid of any air. So I'm gonna turn it on a little bit. And then I'll also turn this one. Oh, you see the coolant? Oh, yeah. And now we can shut that one and just go straight for the coolant. So I'm gonna do this and I'm going to monitor the bucket too. All right, so we're going in right now with coolant and it's hard to tell right now, but it is flowing in there. And you can see here that the vacuum is going down which means we're filling the system and soon hoses like this will fill up with coolant and we won't have any air in the system. The reservoir is getting full. I'm starting to feel this flowing too. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so we'll top this up and we should be good. We shouldn't have any air pockets at this point, which is gonna save us a lot of time. All right guys, it's getting late. I'm pretty gross, but we're ready for the first start. The thermostat job is done and we're gonna drive it around and hope that it doesn't overheat. So with that. It runs good, it runs good. And that was, you know, kind of a cold start. It's been off for about five hours and I didn't hear uh, any of the timing chain slap in the rear, which means that the tensioners are probably in good shape. It's a 13, they supposedly fixed that, so. You know, you never know, 128,000 miles. It's an Audi, it's an Audi. Um, all right, let's go for a ride. All right, I've had it running for about 15 minutes and we do have the check engine light back on and the gauge is right in the middle. The heat is working well. All the air is bled out of the system and the check engine light is some kind of fuel pressure issue. This has direct injection, but uh, we'll see if that affects the way it runs and drives. So far, it seems to rev up nicely. It runs beautifully. All right, guys, it is actually the next day. I've cleaned myself up a bit. We had a major rainstorm last night, so, and then it was getting dark, so not a good time to film. Um, but I did let the car run, and we did drive it last night, and it didn't overheat, which is good, but I wanna give it a little bit more of an extensive test. So I just fired this thing up. It's warming up right now. So we're not quite at that halfway point yet, um, but last night was a good sign. We had the AC on and everything and the car drives beautifully. It's really tight. The steering, it feels like a brand new car. No squeaks or rattles. I'm really liking the steering wheel. The whole interior layout is nice on this update. And it just seems like this was someone's normal everyday car. It wasn't modded. Like you see a lot of these S4s are all kind of hacked up and people are running wires for speakers and aftermarket stuff all over the place. This thing was just some normal person's car. He drove it to work and he just enjoyed it for what it is. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that this test drive will prove that it doesn't overheat. Uh, I got to get on it a few times. We're going to drive it around for quite some time to verify that the issue is fixed. And yeah, we might have gotten away with it just being a thermostat. All right. It runs well. I'm not saying it's the fastest car in the world. It definitely needs some mods. Maybe that's why all these things are modded. It shifts pretty quick. The transmission is smooth. It's got good acceleration. We've gone three miles now today and it hasn't overheated. I think we did like five miles yesterday without any issues. And before just idling, it would be getting up there uh, towards the red. I don't know, S4 guys. Is that all they have stock? I don't know, Sam? I think that it's more refined than say like a BMW, so it definitely doesn't feel as fast. It does not, it does not feel that fast. And so, but I can tell you right now, dual pulley and uh, air intake, and then the exhaust, of course, you open that up and it makes all the right noises. Right. And it makes it way, way faster. But if you launch this stock, it actually launches pretty hard. And because this is the uh, facelifted version, mm -hmm. Can I program a two-step or a launch control or something like yeah, that right into the factory computer? The B8 and a half, Integrated Engineering has a software that you can actually do two-step with, with no extra modules or anything. They just literally tune it into the ECU of the car. Let's see really quick. Where is traction button? It's this right here. Did it go off? Yeah, it says off. Uh, it says off. Okay. And then put it, is it in sport mode? Um, no, no, you want it in sport. Oh, there we go. So sport mode. S. Okay. Put your foot on the brake hard. 
and then put your foot all the way down on the gas. Oh, no way. Yeah. Dude. Oh, we, <laughs> we got a steering fault. There you go. Okay, okay. no, you're right. This isn't bad. Audi, come on. We were doing so well. It was a good launch. And now there's something wrong with the steering. Does it feel the same? It feels the same. Okay. Then there's nothing wrong there's with nothing it. There's nothing wrong with it. All right, I'll take it. If it feels the same and it runs well. Okay, that was pretty cool. That's factory too. Yeah. Wow. So then we can so then we can add in the two step to that basically. Yeah. Okay. You got to put a pulley at least yeah, right. an upper pulley on it. Okay. But that's the thing. So you add like say another 150 crank horsepower, so maybe right. 80, 90 to the wheels and add into that uh, a two-step launch control and a DSG transmission tune so you can raise the rev on that launch and you're going pretty quick. You know, I'm being a little harsh on this car too because it still does have the check engine light. Something with the fuel pressure, um, direct injection, could be a bad pump, could be a sensor, who knows? I don't know if it's affecting performance. It very well could be. This thing could be a little bit quicker uh, than what I'm experiencing right now. So I'm sorry, Audi, if I was being a little rough on you there, but I don't know. It just felt it felt like it was lacking. But now with that with that whole launch control thing, this is nice. And you know, steering fault or no steering fault, this thing steers really, really well. So we haven't overheated yet, and we've gone 5.1 miles. And yeah, I mean, we drove about this yesterday. I think we're good on the overheating front here. We would have seen a warning by now. That's the rooster that always attacks Sam. Let's see. Hey, little guy. Hey, it's not attacking me. I can't believe I'm getting this close. Hit that like button for the rooster that's not trying to kill me right now. And here is the code for the steering light. Not exactly sure what this means at this point, but uh, I think I'm just gonna clear it out and we'll just keep on driving it. I have a few more days here in Florida. We'll see if it comes back, but it seemed to only come on when I did that launch. So I guess I'll have to do some more launches. Alex, what are you doing, man? Are you going home or what? Well, I wanted to drive this back, but it's got the code for the fuel pressure thing and now the steering wheel issue or whatever that steering issue is. Big so uh, it's $75 to fly back to Chicago, which I think may be the best route here. That's actually a pretty good deal. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if this will make it. But the shipping, uh, yeah, well. The shipping's uh, expensive, but I don't want to break down and then have to get it shipped anyway. We know it doesn't overheat. So I don't know. I'll drive it around for a few more days in Florida, see how I like this car and see how it does, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make that call. So follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'll update you guys on, you know, if I drove it back or if I flew home. Well, he's and gonna fly home. He told me probably. in private that he's missed a few days of his hair loss treatment. That is not true. I brought some. Oh, I, it's still looking good, all right? No, it looks, it looks honestly, I, I commented a million times on how good it looks. All right, with that, guys, let me know what you think of the Audi in the comments section. I really do not know what I'm going to do with this car. Uh, now that it doesn't overheat, I could probably flip it, make some money. Or, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. I'm going to see if I like it. Sam? Flip it? Yeah. No, you don't flip anything. I know. I usually you keep everything. You wait till it goes down in value, and then you exactly. sell it for a little while. I do have a lot of projects going on right now, so you know, I don't know if I'm going to get to this anytime soon anyway. Oh, come on. All right. And so that with that, with that, you guys got to let him know, do you want to see the V6 supercharged Audi? I think, uh, I mean, I really like mine. I think you'll like this one. This one fixed will be better than mine. You just have to have our fingers crossed. It's not that big of an issue. Right, exactly. So I don't know. I got to get back to the V12. I know you guys have already commented about that. I don't want it to turn in what, about to what? that. An unfinished project? Yeah. Your V12 it's that not you just it's, mentioned? It, it runs. All right. I just got to put it back together. That runs too. I just drove it out of the barn to move it. There. All right. Well, you're, you're further along than I am. So it runs good too. Anyway, if you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Check out Sam's channel. He's got a few cars too. And uh, most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.